So an example, now an example of application, optimized design and operation. Okay, uh, in order to explain to how you get, how you can have a, an optimized operation, you must know, at least in, in uh, rough lines, how a, power, a hydroelectric power plant is designed. Okay, so I need to talk a little bit about design in order to justify uh, why the operation has to be that way. Okay, so I'm, I'm talking about design, okay, first. So let's see the problem and let's uh, define, uh, well, uh, uh, I would say a synthetic problem just to exemplify. Let's, let's take this case just to build a, build a scenario for us. So we have three reservoirs like this, okay. Um, well, that's the, the flow rate of the main river, 100 cubic meters per second. So that's the, the river uh, feeding this first reservoir, okay. Uh, the second, that, that's the height, okay, the, the nominal height, I'm going to explain this, okay. That's the, well, the second reservoir has a, one or some tributaries, okay. So you have an additional 10 cubic meters per second from, from rivers that, is, that are arriving here, okay? Uh, you see what I mean, okay? Let me get my pen. So you have the main river flowing that way, okay? So you have 100 cubic meters. That's the first reservoir. The second reservoir has tributaries that uh, contribute to 10. Okay, so 10. And the, the third reservoir also has uh, tributaries that contribute with additional 20 cubic meters per, per second. Okay, so the final flow rate, the final total flow rate is 130. Okay, so 130 is 100 plus 10 plus 20. Okay, and those are average numbers. This is very important, okay? These uh, th these um, numbers are averages, okay? The flow rates have seasonal variations, as I'm showing here, okay? So the main river varies, its flow rate varies, its uh, average is 100, but its uh, instantaneous flow rate can vary. And we're going to define a, a variation, uh, well, just to represent the actual variations that we have in order to simulate the effects. So we're going to suppose that, uh, we're going to assume that the main river has a, a slow variation around 100, okay? And the other tributaries, okay? The one, uh, I don't remember which one is which, but one of those will have, well, uh, a higher frequency variation as this one and the let's say the green tributary will vary a lot in the first years of the uh, in the first months of the year and then it's going to remain stable through the rest of the year okay we're going to give some some um, uh, definitions proper definitions to these variations but that's the case here okay so just to repeat the problem is how can I operate these uh, these dams here, these turbines, in order to maximize power production in face of these variations here? Okay, so let's see. How, uh, if we have to design these turbines to to define, specify these turbines, how this is done? Okay, so I'm going to explain you how. You see, the first thing, you have to choose this, the, the type of turbine and also the size of turbine, okay? For each turbine or each type of turbine you have, you can characterize its uh, conversion efficiency in terms of its rotation, okay? It's usual, it's practical to use what we call specific rotations, okay? Uh, which is defined here, okay? N, capital N, is the actual rotation in, in RPM or, or radians per second. Okay, so we divide by power and so on just to normalize uh, 
these rotations, okay? So uh, that's um, a working form. So when you plot different sizes of turbines, okay, you have this kind of uh, variation in terms of its efficiency. So if, if you choose this size of turbine, this turbine size, okay, you're going to calculate the flow rate in height and so on in order to operate in this point here because it's the maximum efficiency point okay maximum efficiency point so uh, if you you don't know the size if you don't know the size uh, and you have to choose the size you're going to choose a particular size but you have to choose the one that gives you the maximum efficiency okay so the choices that you have are actually those points of maximum efficiency okay and if you uh, link this maximum efficiency point you have this blue curve here okay so this blue curve is the locus in portuguese we call uh, lugar geométrico okay locus of design points of maximum efficiency conversion okay so we're going to to assess calculate a specific point okay and the turbine that goes on this specific point is the one that has maximum efficiency okay so that's how things work and what are the types of turbines water turbines there are three types okay pelton francis and kaplan okay in ibitinga for instance in is kaplan i don't know if you know in uh, in cubatão uh, there's a power plant called Henry Borden. Okay, it uses this type of turbine, Pelton turbines, for for high altitudes. Delta H is very big. Okay, so the normalized specific rotation is low because delta H is high. Okay, so uh, a Pelton turbine is more appropriate for for hundreds of meters of delta H. Okay, Kaplan turbines. Or turbines uh, more appropriate for uh, small altitudes here, 50 meters, as we're going to use in our case. And Francis turbines is a kind of a intermediary. It's like a flex, like a flex fuel engine, okay? Because it works at higher altitudes and also lower altitudes. So if you have a reservoir and you have a very huge variation in terms of height, okay? So it's better to use to choose a Francis turbine because you have uh, more room for, for optimization okay so that's our, our market let's say we, we have to choose a, a kind of turbine when we calculate the specific rotations for the data that we have these height this flow rate and so on we get these results okay in terms of specific rotation uh, 3.14 0 0.4 so we're going to to choose a Kaplan turbine okay 3.14 is something around here we could choose Francis but I'm going to choose Kaplan okay because uh, well it's I know that in, in Tiete River uh, they are all Kaplan turbines if you just to, to remain close to the to our local reality here in Sao Paulo okay so we're choosing Kaplan turbines and uh, here's some more specific data in terms of the application in terms of uh, delta h what we call head that's from the jargon okay and uh, typical efficiencies okay uh, let me move on so let me now define the problem the problem the problem is that the design as i showed you is based on nominal parameters Okay, by nominal, I mean annual or pluriannual averages, the average flow rate and so on. Okay, so the result is optimized, okay, the maximum efficiency is optimized for these nominal parameters. Okay, but the, the actual instantaneous uh, operation parameters vary with, with respect to these nominal parameters. For instance, the instantaneous flow rate varies. I'm going back a few slides. Okay, so the instantaneous 
this 100 cubic meter is the annual average but the instantaneous flow rate is varying okay as I showed you here so 100 is the average but the instantaneous flow rates can be above 100 or below 100 okay so that's the point so when we design a power plant we design for these average values okay 100 20 and 10 okay but the instantaneous reality of, uh, of operation may be different okay so that's uh, what is said here okay the, op the operating parameters vary with respect to nominal parameters so we have this problem that's the a key point here okay so we have this problem how to adjust uh, the overall operation okay acting on controllable variables in order to optimize performance okay so how can I uh, set this flow rate to compensate for a difference in terms of uh, a difference with respect to the nominal parameters okay and so on okay so that's it that's the problem let's try to formulate this problem now right now okay let's see uh, we have yeah I forgot to, to talk about this uh, two formulas here so when we when we talk about optimization okay you have to, to say what is going to be optimized. What do you want to be optimized? Okay, so you, you have what we call performance uh, criterion. Okay, or in terms of uh, optimization jargon, what is going to be the optimization function? This function phi cyst here, this function here, uh, this is the function that we're going to try to optimize so this function phi we're going to to define we're going to have to define this in order to uh, to, to formulate the problem so that's what we're going to do okay uh, yeah and let's suppose that um, each reservoir has one uh, one optimization function phi okay I'm going to define it in a few moments but suppose each one can be optimized can you can define what's going to be its uh, optimization function and if you want to optimize the whole system okay if you want to maximize the whole system you can for instance add these functions okay so suppose uh, phi is equal to the um, to the, the, the total energy generation during the year okay so if you sum so if you add up all the the energy gen generated here here and here and during a whole year that's uh, what we want to maximize and the point is that you, you're going to see this is really going to happen if you want to optimize the sum of three uh, terms for instance I don't know uh, a plus B plus C okay you can allow for instance you can allow for yeah the, the, the perfect situation is to have all three terms going up okay all three terms going up this is perfect uh, but you may have a situation in which let me draw down here okay in which one of these go down Okay, but the other two goes much higher okay so by sacrificing this one you enable um, a more uh, a more significant optimization of the, the other remaining terms okay so that's uh, we're going to see this happening in our simulation okay Spe and this is especially related to the size to the volume of these reservoirs here okay okay so that's it we're going to we have uh, during the year we have an instantation instantaneous total generation okay instantaneous total generation and because the flow rates are varying the instantaneous total generation is going to vary during the year as I'm showing you here okay okay so uh, let's try to to identify a possible uh, a possible single objective optimization function 
Okay, so let's think about what do we want. Okay, what do we want? We want to, to we want two things here. Okay, we want two things here. We want to, roughly speaking, we want to increase the average the average generation, instantaneous generation, because by increasing the average, the annual average, I uh, I assure that uh, the total volume is going to be increased. Okay, so we want to increase the average generation, the average power, okay? But we also want another thing. We want, as I was mentioning, we want regularity, okay? So we want to decrease the dispersion around the average, okay? We want to increase uh, W, okay? But we want to decrease sigma. And sigma, you may, you may calculate as being the standard deviation around the average value. Okay, so we want these two objectives. We want this two. Okay, so at this point, we identify two things that we want to optimize. And we have a choice to make now. Okay, we can uh, formulate the problem as a multi-objective optimization problem. Okay. And we went, we end up with a kind of a kind of a Pareto frontier, okay? Uh, in a in a multi-objective optimization problem, you get something like this, okay? So you plot W here, sigma here, and you may have a Pareto frontier, which is your uh, non-dominant points, okay? So that's multi-objective optimization uh, stuff, okay? And we're not going to follow this path, okay? We're going to to, to transform our multi-objective optimization problem to a single optimization problem by defining this artificial optimization function. So let's see how it works, okay? If we want to increase W, we want to increase W and we want to decrease sigma, we can calculate this. We can uh, put W in a numerator, okay? And sigma in the, sorry, in the denominator, okay? So when W increases and at the same time sigma decreases, that means that phi increases, okay? That's completely artificial. We're going to, actually, we're going to have different optimization functions, but the idea is that when we get what we want, okay, uh, when we get the, the, the behavior that we want, we can uh, transform this in a characteristic behavior or of our single objective function, okay? So that's it, and that's a possibility. Uh, as I said, this is completely artificial. You can, for instance, uh, uh, have different definitions. As I said, you can uh, square this, for instance. You have another optimization function. Okay, so that the one that is written here is the one that we are going to adopt. But we also we are also going to have other other definitions in order to to verify if the definition of the optimization function affects the final result or the final conclusion at least, okay? So let's see. Uh, now we have to model. So we have already an optimization function and we're going to have others, okay? But we have at least one, okay? So we want to optimize this optimization function, okay? Which is the sum of the individual optimization function, okay? And we also have uh, restrictions. This is not, this is a constrained optimization problem, actually, okay? And what are our restric restrictions, okay? Those restrictions are related to mass balance in the reservoir, as I'm showing you here, okay? So the variation of the total reservoir volume, K here, is for the kth reservoir. We have reservoir number one, two, three, okay? So this equation applies to all three reservoirs, okay? So the variation in volume is equal to 
the input flow rate uh, of the main river, okay, plus the, the tributary flow rate minus the downstream flow rate, okay? So this is very, very simple. This is the first restriction, okay? Another restriction is uh, the performance, the turbine performance, okay? So that's the conservation of energy. So the, the power, instantaneous power generated by the turbine is equal to the formula that we uh, derived in a few slides back multiplied by an efficiency factor here. Eta here is related to the efficiency, which is, I'm going back one slide, okay, some slides, and is related to these curves here, okay? So, and that's the central point. So, you have mass balance, you have performance equations, okay, and, well, if you want to assess the, the total energy generation, you simply integrate the total power, okay? And related to this performance, that's the uh, turbine performance, okay, which is characterized by the effic its efficiency, okay, so eta is a function of the uh, specific rotation, as I mentioned, and you also have a very, very, very important uh, parameter here, or variable, to, to be more precise, which is related to delta H we call head, that's the jargon, okay, but it's the, the height of the reservoir, or, or the water, the water level, okay, and this actually relates to the volume through the reservoir. We could say that delta H, okay, is, is a characteristic of the reservoir performance, and this is related to its geometry. Okay, so we're going to to construct this model. It's it's very simple. Okay, these curves, these eta curves, you have from the manufacturers of these turbines. Okay, in this one, this function here, you can assess from the geometry of the reservoir. I'm going to show you how. Okay, so uh, well, this slide here is just to show you that. Uh, this actually happens in real rivers, in real systems, okay, just to justify, justify the following, okay. Uh, we are going to define some variations, some mathematical formulas to, to simulate this kind of behavior, okay. And it's going to be like this. So, for the main river, we're going to have these variations, um, harmonic variations, actually. So. Uh, so we have 100 is the, the average flow rate and a sinusoidal variation around 100 as it's drawn here, okay? The blue river is going to vary like this, so it's, it's 20, okay? Uh, so it's a sinusoidal variations, variation, okay? As well. And the, red, the green river, you have uh, a sinusoidal variation uh, during this this uh, period here, and then a constant flow rate. The corresponding mathematic formula is given here, okay? And the the average flow rate is is 10 cubic meters. So that's why we have this strange number here, 7.878. That's uh, when we, we when you integrate this during the whole year, okay? You you get 10 as the average flow rate, okay? So these definitions is just to, to simulate this kind of behavior, actual behavior in a, a real river, okay? Uh, yeah, so the turbine, how, how do we control the turbine and how can we model these uh, performance curves or efficiency curves, uh, okay? So what we can do to control the, the operator can increase or decrease the flow rate, okay, that is being used to, to generate, okay. So this can be controlled, you open or close this valve, you increase or decrease this flow rate instantaneously. Of course, during a year, okay, this has to be equal to the average flow rate, okay, but, but instantaneously you can vary this, okay. So Q is variable or controllable. This is 
one controllable parameter because uh, I'm emphasizing this because these variations here you don't control them they happen okay they happen so you have to the point is how can I change these uh, flow rates in order to cope with these non-controllable variations in order to optimize the, the overall system that's the point okay so that's our controllable variable and as I mentioned the turbine was designed for an average flow rate or a nominal flow rate which corresponds to maximum conversion efficiency so when we vary this we know that we're going to decrease the individual efficiency but uh, it may be increasing the overall efficiency okay so uh, in order to model this what we're going to do we're going to to well this this at the curves here you get from the manufacturers okay and we can model like this for instance this, this is again just to to exemplify okay so suppose that we have this kind of, of variation okay at the max is the nominal design point okay and uh, x is a normalized uh, rotation okay so the the manufacturer i'm going back a few slides okay uh, to get the yeah so you have for this model for instance you have a minimum rotation and a maximum rotation okay it's uh, nearly two and roughly ten here okay so uh, x in that slide so zero means two and one means ten so we're normalizing uh, the specific rotation okay in order to re represent this okay, so that's again this is just a way of, of uh, modeling things okay so that's it uh, yeah and the nominal point is the average between zero and one okay or, or the average between the two uh, minimum and max nominal rotation okay Okay, now the reservoir. This is the most important part because that you get from the geometry of the reservoir. And what I want to show you today is how this affects the overall performance. Okay, so suppose that um, the geometric form of our reservoir is something like it's drawn here. Okay, so it's a kind of a pyramid cut. Okay, so you have this. Uh, this uh, form this base yeah okay and you have all the parameters so that's the extension that's height and so on so capital a b and, and beta and alpha are the ge ge geometrical parameters okay and what we want to to get here is a formula relating delta h delta h to the volume okay that's very important so you know that uh, the, the the total volume is um, the, ex the the height of the pyramid okay multiplied by the base area okay so the height here is l and uh, well the the area here you can get from uh, yeah here. okay this formula so I'm I'm, not, I'm going past very very quickly here because the idea is not to to make these calculations you can do it by yourselves afterwards okay and you get this final relation here so that's a relation between h okay the head of the reservoir the pressure that's going to be used to generate electricity and the reservoir's volume okay it's a complex relation because you have delta h here and here but you also have delta h inside alpha and beta okay because they are given by these formulas okay. this is very very easy to do okay so the formula that we have to use is this one and uh, by getting some uh, typical results or, or typical numbers we get this kind of result so five kilometers extension this is a small reservoir okay 100 meters 200 meters 50 meters okay this is these are typicals this is typical for um, small uh, reservoirs in the Tiete river okay so by doing the calculations we get 0 0.025 cubic kilometers of water in this reservoir 
And when you compare this with the Taipu, 19 cubic kilometers, and with the Belo Monte, okay, 2.5 kilometers, okay, you get this uh, this typical numbers here. Uh, another problem that is uh, interesting to emphasize is the effect of silting, okay. You, you know, you have uh, material that is constantly being deposited on the bottom of the reservoir. And this material, solid material, it occupies volume, okay? So what happens is that during time, we have what we call silting. And uh, so you have, uh, for a given volume, you have um, a higher height here in the reservoir. That means that your reservoir is losing efficiency, okay, in terms of its uh, storing capacity. And so, periodically, you have to, to remove this material in order to recover its original performance. Because, again, uh, the design was made supposing, assuming a given nominal uh, volume here for the reservoir. Okay, so silting is a very important uh, problem uh, it, it is related to to OPEX to maintenance cost of this power plant okay so we're almost there uh, so combining these equations okay we have uh, flow rates here that vary in time we are going to adjust Q uh, Q1 Q2 and Q3 in order to maximize the overall power Okay, the individual power, the individual powers are given by this formula. Okay, so the specific rotation goes here. Okay, so in Q, the individual flow rate and delta H goes here. And what I want to emphasize is here, those are conflicting effects because uh, you see that um, in order to have maximum efficiency, which corresponds to x equals 0 0.5, okay, you have to have uh this relation a square root of q multiplied by delta h to minus three fourths equals constant okay in order to have no matter what you do with the flow rate if the the corresponding height uh, satisfies this relation you have always maximum efficiency okay but when you look at the reservoir performance you see that uh, when Q increases, okay, Q increases, of course, you have a tendency to decrease the, the level here. If you increase the flow rate, this is going to decrease if A1 is constant. So, in order to maintain nominal condition, it would be interesting to maintain this relation. And this conflicts with this, okay? So, that's the base of the problem that we want to solve in terms the, of the instantaneous optimization, okay? So we have everything now in order to, to do the, the simulation, okay? We want to adjust these flow rates in order to obtain a maximum, uh, maximize this optimization factor. And just repeat, we want to maximize average power because in the whole year, this is going to result in a in a higher, um, a greater amount of total generated electricity, and we want to simultaneously minimize sigma in order to have uh, more regularity. Okay, so let's see. Let's see the the optimization strategy. Okay, it's very very simple. Okay, I'm going to to explain here. It is written here, and I'm using only two variables because it's sim simpler to explain. Okay, so follow me, okay, bear with me. You, you start by uh, assessing, by, by, by stating that the flow rate Q1 is going to be this value and Q2 is going to be this value, okay? Then, then you make a random variation of one of those. So let's say that you step here, okay? In your software, you're going to test if this increases or decreases the objective function if it decreases you discard this variation okay so you discard if it increases as here so 
you see you're closer to the optimal so if it uh, enhances the objective function you keep this variation okay and that's it then you repeat the process in the other direction this one it increases okay you keep the variation and you keep doing this so you you go to the you have a, a heuristics that uh, leads you to the optimum so that's what's going to be done okay I'm going to show you how yeah and that's the software so let me explain if I manage let me explain the, the software okay if you want to download this software uh, if you want to use this software you you send me a message uh, and I will send you or I can post the link on Facebook so this is the the, the control panel of this software is a simple software actually so these are the reservoirs characteristics okay a B L D H and so on okay, and that's the the total volume of each of these three uh, reservoirs those those are the the turbines okay the parameters that define the turbines okay and these are results actually so instantaneous power uh, of each turbine okay and total generation you you we're, we see these uh, those are the annual values so those are the river and tributaries uh, flow rates they are here okay here are the individual flow rates of each reservoir okay so this is q1 q2 and q3 okay here we have the volumes of each reservoir the corresponding heads okay h this is delta h and this is uh, efficiency of each turbine during the year okay this is here you have time okay and uh, well the power this is uh, omega uh, sorry w during the year okay so what we are going to do i'm going to start the software in a in a moment what we are going to do we start from a, from a, an operating scenario for instance, constant flow rates in each, or almost constant flow rate in each uh, reservoir. Okay, so this is Q1, Q2, and Q3. I'm going back one slide. So what we're going, this uh, starting point here, is means constant flow rate during the whole year doing for, for the three reservoirs. Okay, and what we're going to do next is to uh, vary each day's flow rate okay because uh, if I'm not mistaken yeah no this is our hours so this is a whole year in hours okay so we are going to vary each uh, the flow rates for every hour during the year okay so we make a random variation here if it uh, enhances the the objective we're going to keep that if not we discard okay and we're going to see the results here okay so those are the, this graph down here is the you're going to see the individual objective functions okay and in this here this graph here is the um, the total objective function just sum of these three okay let me let me uh, uh, start the, the the software you see here it's uh, varying the flow rates okay it's varying the flow rates and you see that the overall objective is increasing also is increasing the individual objectives okay but something interesting is going to happen I'm going to pause the software okay you see that uh, well let me go back a few you see that uh, we started for instance the green reservoir I don't remember I don't don't remember which one is which but the the, the green reservoir in the beginning of the, the optimization had very very low efficiencies for instance 0 0.7 okay and during during the optimization you see here 
that your efficiency, individual efficiency, is increasing. Okay, is increasing. So that's why the overall efficiency is increasing. Okay, you see that very clearly. Okay, but something interesting is going to start happening right now. You see, uh, I think it's the white reservoir. It's oops, sorry. Let me change slides. Sorry for that. Let me go to that point. You see here. Let me pause. You see here the individual efficiency of the white reservoir is starting to decrease, and this is enabling the the efficiency of the red and the green reservoir to increase further. Okay, so this loss of efficiency is more than compensated by this gain in efficiency of these two reservoirs. Okay, the white reservoir is the first one. Okay, so you see that uh, you are sacrificing the the first reservoir, the performance of the first reservoir, so that the other two reservoirs ha have increased efficiency, and that means increased generation. Okay, I'm going to accelerate to to the end of the simulation. Okay, you see that. Here uh, you, you reach uh, kind of a maximum here for the year, okay, and that's the conclusion, okay. So the what you can conclude from this is that uh, due to the variations of these uh, of these the, the main river and its tri tributaries, okay, and to the fact that the the total flow rate passes. Okay, so the white flow rate adds with the green flow rate and, and adds with the red flow rate and passes through the final reservoir. Okay, it's better to sacrifice, if you have to sacrifice one reservoir, it's better to sacrifice the first because it has the smallest flow rates. Okay, so that's the conclusion. The point now is that what is the effect, okay, of that particular um, particular optimization function because as I mentioned this is completely arbitrary okay so uh, what we're going to do is to vary to change this optimization function okay to to see if by changing this optimization function we reach the same conclusion which is this conclusion to sacrifice the first reservoir for the sake of the following reservoirs downstream okay uh, so that's the first question that i want to to answer now another question is what is the effect of the size of the reservoir okay because i start this class by saying that well it's better to have big reservoirs uh, but you have uh, environmental problems that's very very typical of belmont you know the original um, Bellamont design, uh, the the size of the reservoir was was much 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 bigger. Okay, Bellamont is something like this. You have the main river, you have the tributaries here. Okay, so it's it's flowing like here. Okay, and let's and the, let's see. The, let me change color here. So the, the original design, okay, had a very so that's the the dam, okay, and let's see, let's suppose that the lake is going to be something like this, okay, that's the original expected lake for Belo Monte project, okay, that's the original lake. So this area. This flooded area was uh, too big, okay, and due to due to uh, environmental concerns, they decided to restrict the flooded area. How do you do this? Okay, you do this by making more more reservoirs, more more dams actually. Okay, so in addition to to this dam here, you 
build here, here, and here. Okay? And then your lake is going to be something like this. Okay? Something much smaller. Okay? I hope my drawing... So the lake, or the, the, the total volume, is much smaller, but it floods a lot less uh, area. Okay? So the point is, that's okay, I'm not uh, questioning this, but you have to be aware that this influences the overall system to the point that it would be better not to have these hydroelectric power plants. That's my, my opinion, actually. Okay, it would be better to have, uh, I don't know, a biomass thermal power plant. Okay? But so the second question is to try to analyze the, the volume, the so the reservoirs are here, okay? So we're going to compare the operation uh, with small and big reservoirs to see what's the difference, okay? And the number that we can use is going to appear here, okay? Just to be more objective. So this number that I'm emphasizing here is actually the numeric value of this number here, okay? So let's see how it goes. Okay, let me show you. Now I don't need to do the simulations. I'm going. I'm just going to show you the final screens. Okay. So this one is this case here is the well. It's, it's always this. It is the same objective function that I already showed you. Okay. I'm not changing this right now. I'm investigating the the size of the influence of the size of the reservoir. So this is the case for a small reservoir. Actually, this is exactly the same the case that we obtained uh, right now. Okay, in the previous slide, and so this small reservoir corresponds to to these volumes here. Okay, and you keep this number. Okay. 40.240, okay? So let's see, let, now the things are, everything is the same except, I think I'm gonna change this, this, this length here, five kilometers, I'm going to change to 15 kilometers, okay? So five is being changed to 15, the, the total volume increases, and the rest remains exactly the same. So this is the large reservoir, okay? The optimization function is the same, the river's uh, flow rates are the same, and we get an increased overall generation. I'm going back one slide. So we, we had 40, okay, that's our numeric value for our optimization function. And simply by working with a bigger reservoir, we have an increased generation. We can also see this in terms of uh, the total, the average power okay and the total energy generation in gigawatts okay and in megawatts okay so we had uh one thousand i can't see this 1585 here and we have here 1538 gigawatts hour so we managed to increase here the, the total generation okay simply by working with a, a larger reservoir Okay, so that justifies what I'm saying, that it's better to have bigger reservoirs, okay? Uh, so now let's see the influence of the optimization function. I'm going back one slide. So instead of adding the terms, yeah, yeah, go on. If you increase uh, the size of the, uh, of the reservoir, you will increase the Sorry, I, I didn't understand uh, what? increase the size of the dam, of the volume, the volume. The volume, the volume, okay? Yeah, the That's volume. Yeah. Uh, then how about uh, the uh, Ah, turbine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, everything is the same because the turbine is is chosen um, from the nominal values, which are the annual averages, and this is not being changed in this uh, simulation. Okay, 
so the design does not change by simply changing the, the size of the reservoir, the volume of the reservoir. Okay? So, uh, I understand your question because, well, if you're varying the reservoir, you should change the, the, the design and the choice of turbine. But as I explained it too quickly, possibly, because uh, as I explained, this is chosen from the nominal values which are not being changed here because especially this the flow rates are not changing and the heights are not changing so dh is the same 50 meters and 50 meters here okay you see uh, the point is that with a bigger reservoir you you can use uh, its uh, its height okay so i don't know if you see here but um, the heights uh, or very less okay so you see that uh, with a bigger reservoir the height of the reservoir does not have to vary a lot to accommodate these uh, variations here okay so that's the point you keep the height constant and that tends to to um, that tends to produce a higher instantaneous efficiency okay because you don't deviate too much from the, the nominal point with a larger reservoir. That's the point. So the next uh, slide compares di a different uh, optimization function. So that's the same uh, evaluation. So with a, now instead of adding up all the terms, we're multiplying them. So the effect is, the, is exactly the same. OK, no problem. Uh, and we get the same conclusion. The number here is different. But the conclusion is the same. Because the number is different because the formula is different. OK? So that's the, the result with a small reservoir, 2,278. And this is the result with a larger reservoir, 6,640. Okay? And, well, the, the, the amount is, is the same. The, okay? So you see that this, uh, it's better. I think, I ha yeah, I have a third uh, optimization function. Now I have a... Uh, the average power to the third, okay, and still the result is the same. It's better to have uh, uh, a bigger reservoir. I, I, I think I can, we can see this. Uh, yeah, we have to compare this number, okay? So 18 compared to 19,000, or well, <laughs> it's too small here, uh, 192 hundred thousands. Okay, compared with 180 hundred thousands. Okay, so it's better to have, it's always better to have a, a larger reservoir. Okay, uh, yeah, so in that, that, uh, let me see if I still have that, yeah, and that's why uh, by reducing the size of, of the reservoir in Belo Monte, I sustain that, uh, I don't know, if you make the, the proper calculations, we might conclude that it would be better not to construct this reservoir at all. It's very good in terms of um, civil engineering because you have more civil engineering structures. You have to, you, you have to spend more concrete and so on. So for those guys that uh, supply Concrete, for instance, a very good business, but for the generation, electricity generation, it's not good. Okay, so that's my point regarding Bellamont. Okay, now uh, just to conclude, that's the final slide. Yeah, I managed. I have still five, uh, have five second, five minutes. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, that's the last slide. Just to justify uh, what I call the functionality of the reservoir okay functionality of the reservoir and functionality of the reservoir in a system such as this as i'm showing you have intermittent source so you have uh, wind power here okay let me get my pointer you have wind power wind power uh, solar uh, but the point is that uh, these sources are intermittent okay so uh, you can use those reservoirs okay to compensate for for these variations we can see this depicted here okay so 
The red curve here represents the power supplied by these intermittent sources here. So it varies. Okay. And the, the black curve here represents the power supplied or absorbed. I'm going to explain this in a moment. Okay. So the black curve here represents the power supplied or absorbed by these uh, hydroelectric power plants. And the idea is that the sum of the red curve plus the black curve gives you a straight line. Okay, so a very constant supply of, of electricity, and that's what we call dispatched power. Okay, because we have to be constant here. So the lens here represents the power that is being supplied in this point here. Okay, and uh, explaining what I mean by uh, absorbed, because there you can actually uh, do the following if you have excess. If you have uh, a lot of wind and a lot of sun, so you have more power than what's being demanded here by the consumers, you can use this power in order to pump water from here to here. I know at least one uh, power plant like this in Bahia, here in Brazil, okay, they have wind mills and also have a small reservoir, and if you have excess power, you use this power to pump water from here to here and when you need if wind stops for instance you can use this water to generate through the turbine so in addition to the turbines you you can also have pumps okay you can also have pumps and you as I'm, i was saying you can use this excess power in order to store this excess energy in, in, in form of water stored in the reservoir which you can use to generate electricity if you don't have any more of this excess power okay so what i call functionality of the reservoir is uh, becoming increasingly important okay in a scenario in which you have several several sources of intermittent uh, performance okay so the point is not to generate a lot of, of electricity I, I showed you we made calculations that the potential for growth in terms of generation is very limited for hydropower okay but but in my opinion the role that they are going to play is not in terms of supplying power okay to the system but in terms of uh, compensating the fluctuations of these intermittent sources okay so that's a very important role because you have very few systems that are able to cope with with this task because the quantities are very very high you cannot use for instance uh, biomass to this biomass is a very stable source of of energy you can store you can you store a biomass for instance you can bor burn more or less in order to generate more or less electricity but you cannot you cannot store uh, the equivalent of uh, uh, kilometers of uh, uh, dozens of cubic kilometers of water in terms of energy that would be too much uh, biomass okay so the reservoir is very important because it is capable of storing very, very big quantities of energies. And there are very few uh, solutions for this problem at the scale that they occur. Okay, So this is a very important point in my talk today. The importance of these um, reservoirs, what I call functionality. And Brazil has a very... Um, significant advantages because we already have a very huge number of reservoirs as I showed you okay and but uh, they are being used for generation okay when we start increasing uh, we start investing in other sources especially those intermittent ones we're going to be needing a lot more of this functionality okay so in terms of stabilizing the, the supply of energy. So uh, they should be playing um, a more important role. 
in other words, just to, come to finalize, uh, it would be very interesting to have very, very large reservoirs, even if they don't generate uh, much electricity, large volumes of, of electricity, but larger reservoirs uh, enables you uh, an overall optimization, okay? As I show you in this uh, small simulation, okay? Okay, that's it. That I wanted to conclude with this slide and with uh, this statement uh, regarding these uh, hydroelectric power plants. Okay, if you have some questions, I'd be happy to answer. <laughs> and my throat is already, already <laughs> in its final moments. Okay. <laughs>